Hey, what's up and welcome everyone to the Iceman Isaac Academy, the second channel for the Iceman Isaac Warzone Academy, where I give even more coaching content to you all. Today, we are talking about how to survive solos, and we have an extremely sweaty solos lobby where I'm going to be telling you all the mistakes that players are making, all the ways that actually some pretty sweaty players are playing to a high level to their advantage, and I'm going to be breaking down everything from beginning to end on how you can improve your solos gameplay. Now, make sure many of you are coming from the main channel. You may recognize my face, my voice, whatever it may be. Make sure you are subscribed here, and please do me a favor. This is the first ever video for this channel. Subscribe, like, and comment like crazy to help boost this channel into the algorithm. It would mean the absolute world to me. But without further ado, I'm going to drop in splat and I'm going to show you guys some extremely sweaty solos gameplay, what they're doing right and what they could do better and what you should implement in your own gameplay. Hope you guys enjoy. Catch you on the next one. Oh, and one other thing. If you guys want to be a part of this action live, I record all of the Iceman Isaac Academy videos live over on Twitch. Make sure to join me over there to be a part of the action. It'll be linked in the description and in the pinned comment. All right. So this time around, let's drop on someone at Super. So that way we don't end up uh, spectating someone out in the sticks for the entire game. But it doesn't look as if Super has been looted at all. Hello. Nice shots out of this guy, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yep, little demon. Nice little bounce stun. Yeah, this is going to be a good game to watch. We lost that one. All right. Come back so we are watching Isaac's Binky. Spelled in a very unique way. All right. 107 people left in the lobby. That's already a lot dead. So hopefully it's either a sweaty lobby... Or if we're going to watch a cheater, I want to watch an absolute demon of a cheater. But it looks like this guy's got the movement. He's already got $11,000. Two people spectating him. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's just a good player. Proxy mine goes off, instantly hits the drop, so he doesn't take that much damage. You can kind of tell, like, little things that he does. So, like, sprint, and then he'll stop for a second and listen for footsteps, and then he'll keep sprinting. Obviously doing a lot of YY cancels just to keep his hands primed. A lot of people ask why pro players are always weapon swapping. It's because that YY like keeps your hands warm. So that way, whenever you do get into an engagement, you are ready. Now we slide cancel for a like a technical reason, right? Because we want our attack sprint reset and we want faster aim down sight. So what he's doing is he's shutting that door behind him so he has an audio cue if someone were to come through it again. This is a good player. Spots him. Nice slide in. Really, really good hit fire out of this guy. Hmm, see. Ooh, wait. Oh, no! So, unfortunately, that guy made, like, a really... I wouldn't call it a rookie mistake, but when you're playing to that level and you're trying to hold off, like, if you're expecting someone to push you, right, because you heard footsteps behind him... Don't hold a door where the second they open it, they're going to have direct line of sight from you. You need to, like, give yourself an angle that when that door opens, you can swing around a corner or you can, like, come out of a come out of a desk and, like, come out of prone. He's literally just standing right in front of it. If that guy's going to push him, he's going to die. Um, whether he expected it or not, that's on him. But uh, clearly we have entered a much sweatier lobby than what we got last time around. So yeah, that's that whole theory behind why people are always switching guns. It's called priming. It 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 happens with everything. It's it's why like you would watch guys who are you know about ready to draw like in an old western draw. That's why they're moving their fingers like this is so they can just have it have it primed. It's the reason why when you see tennis players getting ready to return a serve, they're like like fiddling their racket around. Um, now there's routines like you've got routines like basketball players who are doing a routine dribble as they go up. Um, that's all part of, like, building muscle memory. Same reason tennis players bounce a ball before they serve. But, like, that YY is all about is all about priming. Um, while we're waiting on this guy to get into another engagement, one other thing we were talking about there for a moment was... Um, interesting. Was slide canceling. And how it actually makes your aim down sight faster. If you were to be in attack sprint animation and then try to aim down sight... It takes longer for you to aim down sight if you're in a sprint animation and even longer if you're in a tack sprint animation. But you can be tack sprinting, hit slide, slide, jump, slide cancel, and that'll reset the game 
to be thinking that you are no longer in a sprint, no longer in a tax sprint animation, but because you slide, and then you slide, and then you jump, you go from sprinting, sprinting slide, and then the second that you hit that second slide, you are now in a stationary crouch, and you have the lowest possible aim down sight time. So that's why there's a lot of value um, in slide canceling, not just for the tax sprint reset, but also for the uh, faster aim down sight. This guy seems to be a pretty good player. He opted to go for a ghost loadout off rip. He also has combat recon, heartbeat sensor, and throwing knife. Um, I probably wouldn't rock heartbeat or a throwing knife in solos, but this is probably like his squad's class as well. But that's actually a really solid ground loot gun, that, that gold MG. So I understand why he did it. OTS looks like he's got the patrol foregrip possibly, um, which we discovered is no longer worth running. The patrol grip helps with your regular sprint speed, but not your tax sprint sprint speed. So there's really no point in using it if you're going to be tax sprinting uh, and resetting it via slide cancel. But I'm curious to see if we can find that guy, Isaac Spinky, again. He was he was pretty freaking twisted, but he may have lost his gulag, especially since we didn't hear him reach out. We saw this guy. We'll call him Nan. Um, I'll let John try to pull up his stats. I don't know if he'll be able to because I don't even know what those characters are. Definitely seems like a competent player. Jumping, scanning, checking his angles. Doesn't look suspicious, but looks very intentional about how, about how he's clearing things out. Now it's time to kind of see how, how he's playing and what he's playing for. Is he playing for money so he can get UAVs? Is he playing for uh, positioning, going for like recons? Hey, the, the best way to tell is when he gets 4k, does he go for a self-revive or does he go for a UAV? If he goes for a UAV, he's playing aggressive. If he goes for a self-revive, he's going to be a little bit more of a conservative player. The 46 people left already. But we already noticed inside of Superstore, there are at least two or three demons in there. So it's going to be a really, really nice game. Especially as we get towards the end game. Checking his heartbeat. He's got to be careful, though. See, that's smart. It's actually really smart. He knew that he wasn't going to be able to get the kill. So he didn't want to alert the player of his presence. And so he pops dead silence. Probably way too early, in my opinion. Uh, but he holds his shot so that way the other player wouldn't expect him. But he pops dead silence way, 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 way too early. So a good player. Probably, based off some of this stuff, definitely not a demon. Uh, you can also tell that shot that went off, it, there's a red arrow, and then there was a red circle, and then there was a red arrow below it. So that means that shot came from the second story bathroom window, but he was still pre-aiming up top. So he's a good player, but I don't think his cross-check and his decision-making is as fast as the best. pre-aiming up to uh to try to be a little bit more silent but i would be worried he's his back is exposed to potentially so many snipers um dangerous dangerous stuff here and even an, an enemy will most likely hear that especially up on the uh, second story i'm always pre-aiming right here potential angles but now he knows kind of based off those sound cues the players up top and then ciao yep yep perfect perfect his timing was a little bit off right so what he was doing is he was going slow going slow going slow and then he was expecting that player to push into the doorway right and if that player pushes into the doorway all of a sudden they have peeker's advantage talked about peeker's advantage in the first in the past but basically as that player swings into the corner they're gonna see you before he sees them so what doom tried or we'll call him doom or nan what this guy tried to do was swing in and get the peeker's advantage on the other player and even better yet not only get peeker's advantage but try to slide around the player and basically get to where you're shooting in their back if you time your shot perfectly. He hesitated for a moment um, and, and kind of missed out on an opportunity there. Grabs another dead silence. Now we'll be able to see what type of player he is. We know he ghosted up first, but he's got pretty, pretty decent loot and he opts for a UAV. So something he needs to be careful about. You guys may not have noticed it, but while I was talking, that SUV got out, and they also placed a precision airstrike, and we saw that red dot appear on the map. So that means there's a ghosted player who's right here. But 
Nan is pushing out. He's going to find a player possibly in transition with that red dot. Spots him. Misses some shots. But he knows with that combat scout, he didn't go inside the window. He went around the back. And he needs to be careful here. He, he's exposing himself to a... He, he might lose. Get out, get out, get out. Yep, he just got stuck. So the mistake that he just made right there is he's using a gun built for close range. OTS, right? But he swings wide around that doorway where he can see, like, he, you know, he, he's 10, 15 feet out in front of that doorway, right? And then the other guy can spot him from such a far distance. If you're playing with an OTS and you're going to clear that angle with an OTS, you need to, like, limit your exposure to that by, by shallowing the door closer. While this guy is doing this, I'll, I'll draw up exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so we're going to watch this hold, and I'm going to explain exactly how that guy screwed up. Okay, we are now watching number one cutie. Good old number one cutie. Playing a little bit slow. Throwing it out. So while he's doing this, let me talk through how that, the, the mistake that that guy made. Okay? So he needs to clear out this doorway. He knows there's someone here, right? But what he opts to do is he swings so wide way out in front of the doorway to where they have this line of sight the entire time. Now, that's fine if he's channeling with the MG82 and is going to long aim down sight that. But instead, what he does is chows with the OTS from this distance and then tries to run up and close that gap and he gets fried in the process. If you're going to clear that with the OTS, don't expose yourself to that long angle. Instead of going like this, really cut yourself close to the door and then work yourself in. So that way with the OTS, you're not exposed to that long angle, you can keep it close. But he made a really bad mistake there. So Cutie Pie it was working in in the distance. What happened is he spot he spotted one person crossing from oops. he spotted one person crossing from here to here, and so now he's looking for that player. Base cam blocking. Uh oh. Well, you kind of got my point. Don't be channeling so wide from down here and exposing yourself to that long angle of sight if you're rocking an SMG. That's fine if you're rocking an AR, but frankly, you're exposing yourself to no man's land anyway. There's no cover over here, right? You need to push up close where you're exposed. And if you get shot in the back, you can wrap around or something. But when you're out here, it's no man's land and you're exposing yourself to a long doorway angle with an SMG in your hand. You're going to die. Yeah, Coles. Uh, we do we do coaching pretty frequently on this channel. We're going to be doing even more uh, now that we started up the second channel. All right, so we're watching number one QT. Six kills. Rocking a Krig. A meta build. Decent movement. Kind of messing up his slide cancels a little bit. He's still using the Krig, though, which has been nerfed into the ground. I uh, don't know if he hasn't played in a while. Level 55 on the season. Throws down an armor box. He picks up everything. So he only picked up six plates. He technically could have been more efficient, right? If he drops those two plates and then picks it up, he'll have an extra two plates on the ground just in case, you know, he gets shot right here. He could have those two plates on the ground to, to plate up with. But, like, this is this is bad news. Like, you should not be aiming down sight in a moment of transition. Like, if, if you're making a move to a next piece of cover, you freaking beeline to that piece of cover with your SMG... And then you get to that cover, and then you evaluate the situation. Or you run out, you B-hop, you, you turn 90 degrees, kind of B-hop, check it out with the AR. Tack sprint, B-hop, turn 90 degrees, check it out. And don't be stopping and aiming down sight in the middle of the field, especially in solos. You're going to get your head ripped off. I really wish they would make a change to the game where heartbeat sensors on the bottom had like batteries and you could only use the heartbeat sensor five times or 10 times. So that way people just can't be pulling it out because it's the only piece of utility in the game that you get unlimited use from. 
except for spotter scope, which I don't even think you can select that. I think you can only pick that up on the ground. Stun. Stuns, flash, snapshot, smokes, gas grenades, uh, decoys. Everything only has one use, and the heartbeat is the only one that has unlimited uses. Uh, and it's... We, they have the mechanic for it in the game, right? Like, they have the gas mask with a, a five tick. They can easily implement... You get five waves or ten waves off of a heartbeat, and you can pick up a heartbeat off the ground. If there is a... And you can see, like, next to the heartbeat, the battery indicator or something. Or even if it automatically picked it up, like, stuns. Like, if you run over a heartbeat, it'll, like, you know, bring you back, like, the full battery. I'd be fine with that, too. One thing you should never do is just sit up on the top of a head glitch. Even if you're just wanting to sit on the high ground, always be, like, either crouch spamming. And there's no reason for him to shoot there. He's not going to get the kill. He's only giving everyone else information about where he is. Not only the guy he's shooting, but everyone else. Um, but, yeah, absolutely no use for that. Unless it's, like, in-game and you're trying to, you know, take away some uh, utility or not utility. Basically, like, people's plates. You're trying to battle of attrition and take people's plates down. But if you're on that high ground, do a tax sprint. Like, you always see me do an auto tax sprint. Oh, yeah, auto tax sprint down. Auto tax sprint down. Auto tax sprint down. But nobody would be using heartbeats then? Darn. <laughs> How do we know where people are a lot? Uh, a lot of it has to do with game sense. You know, knowing the areas of the maps that we've already cleared out. Knowing where, based off of our experience, where we expect players to be. Um, obviously, like, constant UAVs. Oh, hello. Oh, okay, good movement. Guy got out. AK-74U gunned! Okay, so he's not, he's not too bad. Nice reaction time there. Nice secondary weapon, though. I actually really like the AK-74U. Finds that, and a durable. That, that Coda guy made a mistake. Like, ideally, when you're making that play, you're running, like, perpendicular to someone as you're getting out. So that way, when you get out, one, you're, like, a little bit... Um, you've got a little bit of cover while the Jeep is driving past you or the tack rover or whatever it may be. Um, but there's also this, this habit of when you're aiming, you're tracking right, 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 right. And then if someone comes left, it's harder to snap, but he got out basically in the exact same direction that they were already pre-aiming. So it's super easy. Um, you want to have people moving their aim laterally because if you're driving right past them, you're already pre-aiming where they're getting out. If that makes sense. Their aim doesn't change relative to where they're moving. Yeah, TGD did a video on the 74U, I think like two or three days after I did my video. I'd say he copied me. I mean, it's just the timing of everything. Recon over flight inbound. Okay, I would get self-revive here. I would get self-revive for sure. Even as an aggressive player, late games, people camping in buildings with snipers. He's got $5,000. That is a missed opportunity here. Yeah, the AK-74U isn't as good as the MP5 and the OTS at close range. You know, it, it kills maybe in like one shot slower two shots slower right so maybe like 50 milliseconds i think is about what it is slower uh um, up ooh, above you above you above you wait i'm actually kind of lost i didn't hear I, I heard the guy but i couldn't I'll spot him either You're nearly done. when he when he's in these moments of transition though he needs to be running with his ak-74u out you have a faster movement speed Ooh. Nice drop shot out of that guy. And then if you're going to be pushing on someone, freaking close those gaps. He like stood there awkwardly and it was like kind of like aiming down sight, slow peeking. Like you, you see all the, all the pro players, all the sweaty players do it. They run in, they slide cancel, check a corner, kind of like back up, run in, slide cancel, kind of check a corner, right? And they're every single corner that they're trying to clear, they're trying to have peekers advantage on. He, he chowed one corner aggressively, but then the rest didn't have Peter's advantage because he was just kind of like aimed on sight walking. 
really good loadouts here. He's got a full durable, $14,000, cluster strike, MAC-10, a really, really nice build on the EM-2. Six kills. This is a waste, though. He he doesn't need to be throwing his trophy system in on a building that's old, that's going to be forced out by the zone. He really could have held on to that for the late game, especially with getting stuns. That was a mistake. Same thing here, man. If you're if you're going to clear out an area, peek out, jiggle, peek at like, but he's just like. And right now he's drawing a lot of attention to himself. Like that takes a lot of skill to hit a moving truck, right? I would have just rotated in, but instead he just burned what? Four sixths of his gas mask, of his durable gas mask. And also alerted the entire lobby, most likely second story window right here, where he's coming from. I would not be surprised if he gets held. No, he's checking the right angles though. Good on him. He's got a, he's got some game sense. Yep, yeah, exactly. That's where he should be checking. And now transition. Pull off that AK-74U. You can reload later. Or that, I guess, MAC-10 now. Good, good, good. Go all the way. Stop scanning. Go, go, go. Slide in. You see that sniper up on the top right? He's now positioning himself. You guys didn't see it. There's a sniper up on the top right up here. So he's got two players on his right. He's got one here. He's got one up here. We know I have a second story building here, but with two vehicles, we likely have someone in the bottom stories there and also someone likely in here. Here's the gunfire on his right. Spots the guy up top. Let's see if he chows slow or if he chows aggressively. Nice. He's keeping an eye on his right. Spots the sniper. Gets him down. He needs to figure out whether that guy on the right is still there. And no... He gets combat bowed, bro. That's happened to me. That is an option if you don't want to slow peek. If you just go up to the wall, you can hit the mount and just... It, it's actually kind of snappy to mount. But the poor guy gets direct combat bowed. All right, now we're on to bad light. Mr. Bad Light. He spots him on the lower left. Nice job to get down, but stop peeking at this point. Don't pull out the combat bow. You got four thousand dollars. You can you can Good safely news. buy some plates here, bro. Buy some plates. Buy some plates. Bad light. He had the buy right there. Wouldn't have ex exposed himself at all. This player needs to push up and close in though. Like, step on his throat. He, he can still buy some plates. Actually, he can buy a gas mask now. It's probably that might be the better play. <laughs> High gas mask. Nice play. Play it slow and then hard cross. Yep. Mm, unlucky. He should have bought plates earlier and shouldn't have tried to make the cheeky play with the combat bow. That cost him. But frankly, I'm glad he died because he didn't deserve to win. Okay, now this guy, Chiefs, has the... Has the... Okay. Can't make it up there off an SUV. Pulls out the close range weapon. Swinging around the outside. He's not trying to play where that awkward kind of fence line is. He's running out of... you got a long way to go, bro. you got to cut in. And now that's all audio cues. And he most likely just put himself in a pinch. There's probably someone on the high ground and probably someone below him. He just, he just forcibly put himself into a pinch. What he could have done is held that corner of the fence and then wait for the player who's in there to go through the vault animation. Because while they're in the vault animation, that's a super easy kill. But instead, he gives the audio cue. And then we see the we can see the shadow on the lower right. There is indeed someone on the high ground. Pushing down on him. Possible gas mask play here. Sees him on the top right. Swing hard, swing hard, swing hard. Nice. Good try. That's about all he can do. That player that we watched that forced himself into a pinch could have won the game so easily. You literally just hold that fence, right? There is no gate right there. The only way you can get through that fence is through vaulting. And so you can just hold that vault, literally just pre-aim that angle, wait for that player to vault over, get a super easy kill. That was a really sweaty lobby though, especially early game.